Notion, Rome, Evernote, Obsidian, OneNote, Coda. Over the past two years, there has been a boom in the personal knowledge management and note-taking industry. This is great for users, but it also presents a bit of a problem in just getting started. How do you know which app to use? Well, can I let you know a little secret? Stay tuned because that's the whole point of today's video. In this video, I cover three categories of PKM apps. That's personal knowledge management in case you're not in the know. And when you should consider using each of them, as well as my personal preferences for an app from each category. These aren't full reviews of each app, those could be entire video series all to themselves. Think of this more as a getting started point. But before diving into that, please keep in mind that personal knowledge management is, well, personal. People have different ways of thinking and different apps lend themselves better to different personalities. The big point I'm trying to make here is I can't prescribe what the best app is for you. I can only offer my general thoughts and guidance. Last year, Anne Laura, founder of Nest Labs, published an article where she suggested that there's three note-taking styles, the architect, the gardener, and the librarian. Now, you may know instinctually which type you are, uh, but I still think you just try out an app from each category and give it a go. For instance, uh, before I tried out Rome Research, I thought that I was definitely an architect. Turns out, Rome really stuck for me and it really changed how I approach note-taking. But even beyond the fact that you might be wrong about your type, chances are you'll push your comfort zone a bit and take away some new ideas, even if you don't stick with it for the long term. So let's start with the architect. This is the person who loves planning and structure. They love the act of designing a system of processes and frameworks that you can then use to organize your entire life. People who tend to be systems thinkers will gravitate towards this approach. And without a doubt, the current king of the crop app for architects is Notion. If you're new to Notion, you might be intimidated on first launch. Basically, you're going to be presented with a bunch of Lego bricks, and it's your job to put those components together in a way that is most effective for you. This is both a strength and a weakness. It makes getting started a bit rough. You can't just open the app for the first time and be ready to do productive work. But what it does mean is that you can create a system that is tuned perfectly for your needs. From databases to Kanban boards and calendars, you can build an incredibly powerful system to manage just about anything within Notion. This is exactly what August Bradley has done in building up Pillars, Pipelines, and Vaults, which is his operating system for his life, which he runs completely within Notion. I've been using August's PPV system for tasks and project management over the past couple of months, and it has really been an amazing change in my productivity level. I'm able to manage everything all in one location. The problem with this is I don't really like Notion for original knowledge work. For that, I prefer the Gardener-focused apps, particularly Rome Research. But before moving on to Rome and gardening apps, let's talk about Notion's other huge strength. It's working with teams. Notion has incredible support for working with other people. Using the same Lego block components, you can basically build a customized app to run your company or nonprofit instead of paying thousands of dollars for specialized systems. Now, there are alternatives to Notion, uh, such as Craft and Coda, each of which has some advantages. However, after playing around with all three, I think you should just bite the bullet and use Notion if this is the type of app that appeals to you. At the moment, it's the clear winner. And when I say bite the bullet, that's really just kind of diving in and getting experience with the app because you can use Notion completely for free, which I've been doing for the past several months. The one appeal to Craft is that if you're running macOS or iOS, it's more of a native app and is much more responsive. As far as Coda, well, we use it at work and frankly, Notion's better. I, I don't know why you would use Coda. But once again, if you want to try out this type of app, just go with Notion. Let's move on to the Gardener. Where the architect enjoys the planning and the designing, the gardener prefers to plant, nurture, and then cultivate their ideas through natural growth. While systematic structures can be built in these apps, the real strength lies in the emergence of new lines of thought through nonlinear chains and bi-directional linking. This category of apps isn't as clear-cut as it was with Notion for Architects. Rome Research was the app which really kickstarted the modern abundance of apps for gardeners and is my current favorite. But which one you use largely depends on your own needs and preferences. My discovery of Rome Research about a year ago was, no joke, a life-changing moment. It felt like a tiny connection was being made between two separate nodes in my brain. 
But once that connection was made, an entire network of thoughts and ideas that were lying dormant before exploded into life. This is because it finally clicked with my mode of thinking. I've always had systems for storing my thoughts, but with Rome I was finally able to make connections between those ideas. Connections that were always possible, but never likely to be made due to the rigid hierarchical solutions I was using before. Now, as I said previously, I didn't know that I would fit with this type of app. Naturally, I thought I would gravitate more towards Notion because I like building systems. So I really do think you should play around with apps from each category. Okay, but what is Roam? Because it can be a bit intimidating. At its core, Roam can be thought of as a wiki-based outliner, but with two huge differences. Firstly is bi-directional linking. Roam allows you to turn any word or phrase into a link to a different page, exactly how a wiki like Wikipedia works. But the big difference is that these links are bi-directional, which means that a page that is linked includes a reference back to the original location. The second difference is block-based references. As I've said earlier, Roam looks and acts like an outliner. Instead of being a document with paragraphs of text, you get these bullets in lists and indentations. Roam calls each of these bullets a block. Once you get into the habit of making each block an individual thought, it really opens you up to new ways of thinking. The combination of bi-directional links with these block-based references allows you to notice and make connections between thoughts, between seemingly wildly different ideas that would have previously remained hidden. Now, as much as I love Rome, there are some major weaknesses which makes it hard to recommend for me to everyone, unlike Notion for architects. Firstly, it's a bit too techy looking by default. Sure, you can customize it, but the plain textual interface is potentially off-putting to many. Secondly are its mobile apps. Well, it, it, it doesn't have any. This made it really hard for me to do work on my iPad while on the go. Finally, while it was a thought leader early on, development stalled in the middle of this year and the future is a bit unknown. This has led me to question if it's wise to have so much critical information stored in a proprietary system. This is also an issue for Notion, uh, but their company in general seems to be a bit more robust and going stronger. Now I'm sure I'll hear from some people asking about Obsidian or open source alternatives like LogSec. Yes, there are alternatives, and I have started to look into LogSec, but I'm not planning on migrating away from Rome in the near future. As far as Obsidian, it's a great app, which I use in addition to Rome, but I can't see it as an alternative. The fact that it's file-based and that all of your data is stored in folders as markdown files on your computer is fantastic. But working at the block level, remember the bullet level, has been crucial to how I work. And even though you can kind of sort of do that in Obsidian, it was tacked on and wasn't built from the ground up with that as a core idea. And that makes a huge difference for me. So in summary, my recommendation for gardeners isn't as clear cut as it was Notion for Architects. I do still say you should just go ahead and try Roam out. So my suggestion is just pay the $15, try it out for a month, see if this type of system works for you. And if it does, then start to look in alternatives if you want to. The final note taking type according to Anne Lore is the librarian. And this is the person who wants to collect and catalog information and resources and archive it in a nicely organized system for later retrieval. These are the more traditional note-taking apps that I'm sure we're all familiar with, such as Evernote and OneNote. This is the category that I most disagree with Anne Laura in. Don't get me wrong, I think we all have a need for a library in our PKM system, be it Evernote or just folders in Dropbox. I just no longer think of them as being a good place for active note-taking. Instead, they're resources to use with your active notes. Which is a bit funny, as Anne Laura's original concept was inspired by George R. R. Martin, where he was talking about there being two types of writers, the architect and the gardener. Nowadays, I have two libraries of resources. The first is just a nested hierarchy of folders on my computer. Nothing fancy. The second is an incredibly powerful app for macOS called DevonThink. DevonThink is way too complicated to get into now, but at a high level, it's just a much better version of Evernote. Seriously, a much, much better version. I use this to archive almost every file I touch from bills to academic papers. But this is exactly what it is on the tin. It's a library of resources. It's not a location for me to work on developing my own original thoughts. It's used in conjunction with Rome. And you know, that's not odd at all. You might, in fact, you probably will find yourself using apps from each of these types depending on the circumstances. Some areas of your life might lend themselves to apps like Notion, whereas others you might want to take the gardener mindset. 
Even though I'm planning on continuing to use Notion for some things, particularly teamwork, I'm in the process of moving August Bradley's PPV system over into Rome. No, it's not a natural fit. It's highly structured and definitely fits into the architect category. But I find value in having my knowledge and task management in the same place, and I'm willing to put in a bit more effort to make it work in the garden gap. If that sounds interesting to you, please stick around as I'll release a video on PPV in Rome as soon as it's ready. If you haven't seen it yet, you might be interested in my first video on this series of knowledge management, where I talk about how not to waste your life reading books by taking better notes the first time around. Until next time, bye! Thank you.